Hi, I'm McKenna Princing, and I'm reading the beginning of my short story, The Boy and the Pennies. It's inspired by a Brothers Grimm fairy tale, and it is in the Jack Straw anthology. We watched the boy carry his can of pennies with him everywhere. Inside King Street Station, walking up and down Yesler, sitting in Occidental Square near the homeless encampments, leaning against the totem pole, standing in front of the Smith Tower and ogling its peak, and even down into the underground tour, the proprietor of which let him tag along with groups of tourists who spoke in hushed voices, as though the remains of the burned city could hear them. Shaken lightly, the pennies clinked softly off the side of the can and tapped each other, making a sound like small bells or wind chimes. The boy liked to make this noise, tipping the can side to side as he walked, never rattling the can loudly or making a noise that was jarring. The origin of the penny can remained mysterious. Many of us asked him where he'd gotten them, trying to strike up a conversation so we could ask questions about his safety or hunger. But he would just smile to himself or at us and continue to jingle the can. Why does he just carry them around? He could buy something to eat, we observed. What can you buy these days with pennies, we scoffed. It's a wonder one of those homeless people hasn't stolen them, we remarked, feeling half guilty for our words. Do you think he's deaf, or can't speak, or doesn't speak English? We speculated as to the boy's silence. Because other than the music of the pennies, the boy made very little noise at all. It wasn't uncommon for us to be startled by his sudden presence when we turned around or changed a direction while walking. We would go to open a door, cross a street, reply to a companion, and suddenly, the boy would be there, in his quiet way, rustling his pennies. He never tried to startle us, we knew. He never yelled or screamed or bumped into us or tried to steal anything. It was simply uncanny how he could appear as though out of thin air. Thank you. Hello, my name is Christiana Crabb. Um, I'm so happy to do uh, this latest Jack Straw contribution. Um, my approach for this song was I actually sampled myself shaking this, shaking this jar of pennies and I used that to help make a synth patch uh, with which I wrote kind of uh, a ghost uh, 80s bop. And I'm wearing this kind of crazy coat which belonged to my late grandmother and kind of makes me feel like a really glamorous sheet ghost. Um, I like that this story was set in Pioneer Square, which has uh, a rich tradition of paranormal activity. It's also one of the first hearts in Seattle um, of sex work and of the gay community. Um, and so I wrote this kind of short song, um, taking inspiration from all of those things um, and all the very different characters who um, have called Seattle home and still do. Um, and I hope that you like it. Um, this is kind of a little bit of a karaoke situation, so I'm going to sing for you with my mic, and I have these going, but really mostly uh, it's pre-recorded, so I hope you like it. And this is called Blood For You. Mm -hmm. 